Hey, this is Justin Gilman with Quantum Leads, and today I'll be walking you through your digital marketing attack plan to show you how you can turn your website into a lead generation machine and really generate some revenue for your business month over month. Now, if you take a look at the top here, we're looking at the search term Roofing Tampa, which generates about 1,600 searches every single month. Now, obviously, there's a lot more searches out there when you factor in search terms like roof installation, um, roof repair, roofing near me. So definitely a lot more volume and potential out there. Um, for the sake of time in this video, we'll just be focusing on the search term roofing Tampa and showing you how this how you can generate revenue off those 1600 searches. So let's start by taking a look at your website. Now, when coming to your website, I think your website serves its purpose as far as giving your customers an easy way to contact you. However, from an SEO perspective, there's a lot more that we can do if we want people to be able to find our website online. Now, we're going to talk about internal search engine optimization to get things started, which is essentially going to lay the foundation for our website um, and determine, you know, where we are going to rank. And what it is, it's essentially just all the different ways that we can improve your website from within the website itself. Normally, you're going to hear things like title tags, heading tags, local business schema. And while those are all internal SEO, um, for the sake of this video, we'll just be talking about content and keywords because those are the two most important aspects. So let's start with content. Why is content so important? Well, content is very important because it gives users something to engage with. And the more content we have, the more things that users have to engage with, and the more likely they are to have a better user experience. Now, it's really important that they have that positive user experience because they're more likely to come back to your website in the future or use Google for future searches. So Google tends to promote websites like that, and obviously it's a win-win situation for them. So like I said, we really want to be content full. Normally, I recommend about 750 to 1,000 words per page, and obviously you can go a lot more than that if you'd like, um, but 750 to 1,000 words tends to be that golden range where we do have a lot of content, yet we don't sacrifice the visual aesthetic of our website. So definitely something to think about. However, you're probably saying, well, Justin, why don't I just throw up a website with 5,000 words and call it a day? And the reason that doesn't work is because we need to make sure that our content remains relevant. And the way we do that is with our keywords. Now, keywords are the most used words or phrases on a web page. And based on these keywords, we are going to tell Google vital information about our business. Um, normally, I like to tell people that we want to answer the three main questions for Google, which are number one, what industry do we work in? Number two, where do we work? You know, what's our location? And number three, who are we? Or kind of, you know, what's our brand? So let's take a look at your keywords and see if they answer those three main questions for Google. So here we are on a tool I use called Keywords Everywhere. And if we scroll down, you're going to notice your most used keywords. Um, we have roofing at number one, which is really great. I always recommend having an industry-specific keyword at number one. Um, but then number two, I notice that you have tile. Now, tile isn't a bad number two keyword because normally I recommend having some sort of complement to the first keyword. Um, so like I said, tile isn't bad, but we kind of want to go for a more popular keyword. Um, that way we can get more searches month over month. So I normally would recommend a complement like maybe roof or even um, you could do something like installation or repair. Um, all those are really good complement keywords to the first keyword, and they still remain very industry specific. Now, number three, I always recommend your location. So you have Tampa, which is perfect. Number four, I recommend your state to kind of complement your city. Um, it's very important that we have our city and state in there because that way we're going to tell Google exactly where we do business, and that's going to help drive local traffic to our website. So definitely something to think about and definitely very important. Now, number five and number six, I always recommend putting our brand in there. Um, the reason I say to put our brand in there is because ultimately, you know, customers look for our business. Sometimes they look for it through roofing services in Tampa, and sometimes they look directly for our brand. So when they do look for our brand, we want to make sure that our company is going to appear. So definitely want our brand within those first five to six keywords. Um, but these are just some kind of ideas for your own keywords. Obviously, you can mix and match these. But let's take a look at one of your competitors and see what they're doing as far as content and keywords go. So here we have Tampa Roofing, and they rank on the first page for roofing services in Tampa. Um, and obviously their exact match domain does help, but it doesn't make or break your searches. Obviously you can still outrank them if you follow a proper SEO strategy. So now if we scroll down here, you're going to notice that they don't even have a lot of content on this page. Um, I'd even argue that you guys have very similar amounts of content. If not, you have more on your own website. Um, however, that shouldn't discourage you from building out more content just because you're beating your competition in something doesn't mean that you can't keep improving. We want to widen that margin and really keep building so that we can tell Google that we are a more trustworthy website and business. So definitely something to think about, still build out that content. Um, however, like I said, let's take a look at how relevant this page is because sometimes people are able to hide keywords and images. So let's take a look at their keywords currently. 
So here we have Tampa Roofing and Keywords Everywhere. And if we scroll down, you'll notice that we have roofing at number one. Um, like I said, very popular, popular industry-specific term. Then we have Tampa. Then we have Systems, Tampa Roofing, their brand, um, roofing company. So a few different keywords. Obviously, this list isn't fully optimized. However, I would recommend using this for some suggestions for your own business um, because there are some things to take away from this. However, like I said, don't take every single keyword. Use this for ideas as well as the suggestions that I gave you to create the strongest keywords list possible. However, let's go back to your website and talk about external search engine optimization and kind of how it ties into everything here. External search engine optimization is essentially just all the different ways that we can improve your website from off-site. Now, in this case, we'll be talking about backlinking, um, very simple at base value, just a link from one website to another. However, from an SEO perspective, a lot more is happening when that is going down. So when you link to another website, you are essentially saying that you trust the information that comes from that website or you trust the business that that website is representing. And that can go a long way with Google because when a quality website tells Google that you are also a quality website, you know, Google tends to look at you as a more, as a more trustworthy business. However, it's very important to focus on the quality of our links because just like we can tell Google that we are a quality website, we can also tell them that we are a harmful or spammy website. So definitely want to focus on the quality of our links. I see it all the time where people go on Fiverr, they pay $50 for 10,000 backlinks and their sites crash 50 spots. You know, And that's no mistake because that's 10,000 different sources telling Google that you are a spam, spammy or harmful site. So definitely want to focus on quality. Let's take a look at your current backlink structure using a tool I have called Ahrefs and see what you've been working with so far. So here we are in Ahrefs, and you'll notice your site generates a 27 UR, a 3.6 DR, about 10 organic users every single month, and a traffic value of $1. So what does this all mean? Now, UR stands for URL rating, and what that is is the individual power that goes to a single page. So in this case, we're just talking about your homepage, which has a 27 UR. Now, DR, on the other hand, stands for domain rating. And what that is, is the power that goes through your entire website. So all of your service pages, your About Us page, your contact page, your home page, all of those are summarized in DR. Now, we want the strongest of both metrics. We never want to just focus on one of them, as long with our internal SEO to create the strongest SEO structure possible. So we can't really skip out on one aspect for another. Um, and you're going to see how that's kind of hurt your website when we look at some of your competitors. Well, let's talk about traffic value. How is traffic value assessed? Now, traffic value is a measure of the buyer intent of each user based on the keyword that they come from. So to give you an example, somebody who's looking at roofs or comes to your website through roofs isn't going to have as much buyer intent as somebody who comes from somebody like roof installation or roof repair. And now the reason that is that somebody looking for roofs might be looking for a picture of a roof, a blog article about a roof. Um, you know, we don't know what they're looking for. Whereas somebody looking for roof installation or roof repair is a lot more specific. And nine times out of 10, they are looking for a direct service. So that keyword tends to carry a lot more buyer intent. So with those in mind, let's take a look at some of your competitors and see what type of metrics they're generating and see how you stack up. So once again, we're looking at Tampa Roofing with a 27 UR, a 3.1 DR, generates about 239 users per month and has a traffic value of about $3,200 month over month. Now, this is a case where you guys SEO as far as external power is very similar. However, their internal SEO is a lot more um, refined. So you start to see that their results are a little bit different than yours, despite having very similar metrics. Let's keep working our way down the line here because we do have the number one company, which is Westfall Roofing, and they have a 33 UR and a 23 DR, which generates them about 4,000 users every single month and about $31,000 worth of traffic value month over month. So this is a great example of what SEO can do for your business when you combine your internal and external SEO structures. So definitely something to think about, and there's a lot of value if done correctly. But let's go back to the Google search engine results page and look at the Google map pack. So we're on the search engine results page. If we scroll down, what we've been talking about is down here in the organic search results. However, we also have this map pack here. And this is super important because it essentially gives businesses a second place that you can win online. You can win down below or in the map pack. And if you can do both, you can essentially guarantee that 1,600 people see your business first before looking at another competitor. So very, very um, important here and a lot of potential. 
So definitely something that we want to think about. Now, to get into the map pack, you first have to verify your business via postcard with Google, which is 100% free. And to rank in the map pack, you have to adhere to the different factors that they're looking for. So number one, they look for that you filled out their form as much as you could. I normally say always fill it out to 100%. Um, because the more information you give them about your business, the more reputable your business looks. Number two, they look for a strong organic rank, which is why SEO is so important, because not only does it help down below, um, but it also influences the map pack. And then number three, what they're looking for is citations. Now, citations are all the different places your business's name, address, and phone number are listed online. Some popular citations are things like Facebook, um, Yelp, the Yellow Pages, Yellow Book. All those are different citations you can give for your business. Um, and they all help with your Google My Business profile. So let's take a look at how many citations each of these companies has and determine how many you'll need in order to start outranking them. So here we are in Whitespark, and you'll notice that Stay Dry Roofing has 47 citations, Quality Roofing Inc. has 62, and Rainer Roofing LLC has 35. So normally I recommend that you double the biggest amount in here. So if there's 62, we are going to need 124 citations to really go in and start outranking these guys. Um, along with a strong internal and external SEO structure. Now, that's all I really have for you in this video. I hope it was very helpful and very educational. Once again, my name is Justin Gilman. I work with Quantum Leads, and I'd love to set up a meeting with you guys to discuss anything that wasn't mentioned in this video, or even anything that you have questions about that was in this video. Um, so please feel free to click that button in the email and schedule a meeting with us. We'd love to hear back from you. But once again, thanks for watching.